Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. Today, I have the beautiful, the very magical Jules Blue <laughs> in the studio. Jules, how are you? I'm doing wonderful today. Super excited. You look very blue today, which Thank I would you. expect nothing <laughs> less. Do you own anything in your closet that's not blue? I do. You do? I do. My colors and my closet range, obviously blue, black. I like earth tones, and I think that's because I'm a Virgo. So like mm. browns and neutrals, whites. The only color that I really don't have a lot of, I think, is red. Mm. Interesting. It's yeah, just, red probably clashes with I don't like know. the whole blue <laughs> look, right? Yeah, I guess. It's just like, it's just not my color. Like it looks great on other people, but I just don't vibe with it. I don't know. <laughs> well, if there's anybody who knows what their color is, it would be you. <laughs> Sometimes I, mean, I just wear all blue and I don't even think about it. It just like, it just happens. You know what's funny? <laughs> okay. So there, there's kind of like a big joke between me and like, so I have, I have some people that work for me who used to work for my mom. Cause you know, my mom was a Mm -hmm. business before I was. My mom loves blue, like China blue specifically. If you look back at her old shoots from like the 80s and the 90s, <laughs> there's always like blue, like silk bedding mm, and stuff like, I that. like that. So she wears a lot of blue too, but she just <laughs> like throws on mismatched blue and it like does not go well <laughs> at all. She doesn't coordinate blue in the way that, that you do. And the other day she was wearing like all blue and I just looked at her and I was like, I feel like Jules needs to come and like reinvent my mom's closet. I could help her with some blue coordination and shades. <laughs> yeah, she's very, she's very into that color. So how did you like, how did your fascination with blue come up? Like when did it start? Oh, wow. So I dyed my hair blue in the summer of 2016. And prior to that, I had been like a bright pink magenta. I don't know. I just kind of like really was experimenting with the colored hair look. I had purple hair before. I had purple, pink, and blue mixed together. And then I just like wanted blue one day. <laughs> and the rest is history. I don't know. Then I just really became into like... Uh, what is it called? Like monotone outfits, just like wearing all of one color. Like monochromatic. And the, yeah, monochromatic. That's it. Yeah, yeah, monochromatic. And just like really felt that blue was the color of my aura. And here we are today. How many years later? Like five. <laughs> so yeah, I've heard this whole thing about auras having different colors. Does that like mean anything in terms of what your aura is like is is the blue the shade of a certain emotion or vibe or something like that well when i think of the color blue i think calm cool collected I think mysterious i think electric just it has many different vibes with the different shades do you think like you encompass all of those things i feel like i do to an extent yeah <laughs> Well, being a Virgo, because um, I'm a Virgo too, yes. and I actually don't know anything about astrology. Um, I only know about my sign. Same. And I do know <laughs> that we're supposed to be pretty, like, steady, like, mellow, right? Like, collect it. I know that we're organized. We're very organized. Yes. I make lists. I have I love lists. lists. I love lists. lists. Are my favorite. Oh my gosh. I love lists. <laughs> I have you a list too. <laughs> I, have, I have one on my phone. Our lists also, like, our <laughs> Our lists also, here's the list. They they also have some of the similar things on the list yeah. too, which I really like. I we should make a list of the two lists that we made together. So like a list of like the things that were on both of our lists. I like that idea. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Virgos, we get a bad rep. People always say that we're like very critical of others, but I feel like I'm more critical of myself than anything. And, but I like stay like, cool and calm and like amongst it all. I you know what? Know. <laughs> so there's some truth to that, but I've, I've done like a lot of like deep emotional diving over my years and a lot of therapy and stuff. And I am critical of others, but when I sit back and I really look at like why I'm being critical or why those thoughts are popping up in my head, it always has to do with myself and how I see myself. So I find that I'm more critical of people that I think are displaying tendencies that I know that I have that I don't like. So essentially, like, if there's someone that I don't really like, then it means that there's something in them 
that is in me that I dislike. So it's more about like a, me. Like a projection. Exactly. Or it could also, I don't know, be that maybe you hold yourself to a really high standard and you feel like someone else also has that standard attainable, but they're not holding themselves to it. So you're like, why are yeah. you? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Do you find that you're hard on yourself? I am very hard on myself. And to an extent, like, you know, in some ways I'm a little critical of others, but not in the like, oh, you know, like not in like a, in a down looking way, but definitely very hard on myself because I just want to be the best, yeah. <laughs> the best of me. What do you find that you're the hardest on yourself about? Like, what are the things that you criticize yourself about the most? Oh, geez. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't no, tell no, you that this okay. is going to turn into a therapy lesson. It's okay. I kind of needed it, I guess. Um, I don't know. I think one of the things I'm really critical with myself about is like my journey in this industry. I feel like, I don't know, I want to be progressing faster than I am and not saying that I'm not progressing, but I just have to like learn to be patient, like, you know, in due time, like these things will come. And I also have a habit of just like having like very big, like aspirations and goals. And I kind of stress myself out in the process of like, you know, obtaining these goals and these things I desire. And sometimes I have to, to like, I don't know, remind myself, I need to chill out because like things are happening and they're happening the way they are for a reason. And I don't know, don't be, don't be a bitch <laughs> to yourself. <laughs> it's, it's, it's that really difficult double-edged sword that I think a lot of perfectionists like you and I find ourselves struggling with because on one hand, it's like that perfectionist side of you is what drives you to be so good at what you do. I mean, we've only worked together a couple of times, but I can say like, you're amazing to work with. You're like incredibly organized. You come with everything. You come with options. You're like super prepared. You like really want to be there. You're 100% you gotta into be prepared it. You got to for everything. Yeah. You never know what's going to happen. Oh my God. I'm the same way. That's why <laughs> I have so much shit in my van. When I like, I show up to shoots. I'm like, I, anything you need, nail glue. I fucking have it zip ties. I have it like I have everything because I hate being without. But so, so it's like that, that personality trait, which makes you so good at your job. Right. But then it's also, I think that personality trait that makes you feel like it's never good enough. Oh yeah. Right. So it's yeah. like you, you, you push yourself and you achieve these things that you wanted, but once you get there, you're like, this isn't good enough. I need to go next level. Do you find yourself doing that? I, I I'm always like, what's next? Or yeah. it makes me think of sometimes I'll like send out like a scene that I like have made for my only fans. And like, while it sends out, I'm just kind of, sometimes I'll be like sitting like on my couch, like, what if they like it? What if they hate it? What if they like it? What if they hate it? Are they going to hate it? Are they going to like it? Oh my God. Should I unsend it? And I'm like freaking out. And then I'm like, I don't know what to do. But then, you know, everybody loves Loves it. And I'm just like, oh, why did I do that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> or like, oh, did I edit that part out? Right. Or <laughs> yeah, I yeah, got, I feel you so hard on all of these things. It's really tough, but it's why we're so good at what we do. You know, sometimes you just gotta like, <sighs> yeah, I'll, I'll do that when I'm sitting at my computer, just, oh, everything's chill. And then look at my list again. <laughs> <laughs> All you gotta do is make a list and it'll make you calm. Yeah. Number one on the list should be like, take a deep breath. Yeah. I also, I also have like my planner right here and then my computer. And then if I'm feeling really stressed, I will actually make a list of like affirmations, you know, things that I'm grateful for. And I have like little mantras. I will say like sometimes even when I'm in the shower, just to kind of keep me centered and keep me on track. Cause That's so, you're even <laughs> organized and like trying to protect your mental health. Yes. I really love that. <laughs> God, I know exactly what you mean too. I'll have to like put in the schedule to like take a day off. If that's, if it's not in my schedule, it's so hard for me to relax. Oh, I, I it's don't, just... when I have an unplanned day off, I'm just like, I feel like I should be working, but then my body's telling me, no, you need to rest because yeah. you're going to really like it. And I try to like really savor my rest days. I've like learned to enjoy rest time yeah. because I don't know, you need it cause you're going to drive yourself crazy and then totally. burn out. Cause I've like kind of gotten close to like, you know, being burnt out from last year, just oh. like going hard, creating all the time. Right. So now I'm like, you mellow out. You don't need to be doing too much all the time. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do? Like, what are some of the things that you do to take care of your mental health when you're feeling overwhelmed? So I like to just be a couch potato sometimes. 
I think that's like good for my mental health because I'm a go, go, go person. I'm always like going somewhere, doing something. So I like on my rest days, normally it's Sunday. I just like to sit on my couch, catch up on my animes and my shows, cuddle with my cats, eat my favorite food and normally just like, I don't know, indulge myself a bit and like the things I like, like good food, just chilling. I don't know. Um, not wearing any makeup also really like my no makeup days, yeah. <laughs> um, go on a walk, get some fresh air, touch some grass, see the sky. Yeah. These are all important <laughs> things. And I think sometimes as a society, we're really not good to ourselves in terms of the way that we push ourselves to work all the time. And, you know, we're constantly rewarded by, you know, you see on social media, that hustle, and all culture. That hustle culture, exactly. It's addicting. It mm-hmm. really is. And like coming from a, a Virgo workaholic perfectionist, I can definitely attest to that. Also like allowing myself to like have like fun or like, you know, play time. And I like, you know, my fun and playtime is like going to a rave or hanging out with my friends and things like that. Just like letting myself like kind of do something like I think of it as like a cathartic release, releasing all this energy and just like, I don't know, dancing. I don't know. It's very healing. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No, these are, these are all good things. Um, so tell us a little bit about like some of the things that you like to do outside of work. Cause you kind of like incorporate those things into work as well. I know that when we shot your twisties treat of the month oh, shoot, so special to me, which was super cool. Um, you, the hula hooping mm-hmm. that you did was, so, I mean, I'd never seen anything like it. It was so cool. So when did you start to get into all of that? And like, what are some other tricks that you do? Cause you do like fire play as well, right? Yes. So things I like to do outside of work. Hmm. Definitely the flow arts, hooping with like LEDs or fire. Um, I got into that about like six years ago, six, seven years ago. I, uh, let me backtrack a bit. So, so backstory when I was in high school, it's all relevant. I did color guard and color guard is essentially dancing with the flag, dancing with a prop. And then when Instagram started becoming a thing, I remember seeing people on Instagram dancing with hula hoops. And I was like, I could do that. It's like the same thing as dancing with the flag. And then I like fast forward to a few years after high school, like around like 2014, 2015, I discovered there was like an actual like community of people in my area who did that. And I got to connect with them and the rest is history with like, you know, my love of flow arts and prop dancing and prop manipulation. And then I learned fire because if I want to do it, I want to do it all. (laughs) So tell us about some of the precautions and and things that you have to take in order to do these fire dances safely. So with fire dancing, first and foremost, besides, you know, learning the prop and being able to do it properly is you want to learn fire safety like fire safety is very important, everybody. And by fire safety, I mean watching like an instructional video on YouTube. There's a lot of good ones learning to wear fire safe clothing, like cottons, nothing with like plastic in it. Um, There's special like allowances. If you're very professional, then you can like wear like a skimpy, I don't know, polyester outfit, but you always have to have a fire safety. So a person spotting you like from the side, a duvetine, which is a fire blanket that puts out the fire. And then I don't know, don't be, don't be intoxicated. Don't <laughs> be intoxicated. What about a fire extinguisher? Does anybody stand um, by next you, to you with a fire extinguisher? You have a fire extinguisher. Although like most of the time when you catch on fire, like, you know, stop, drop, drop and roll is like always a thing. And you know, the duvetine is also important too because it smothers the fire. I've never like needed to be fire extinguished. Um, but that would be kind of cool. <laughs> I guess that, that would kind it of would be, be it would be, it would, could be dramatic, I guess. Um, there's also like this like fire resistant like gel, I guess people like put on themselves. I've heard of like a friend that I had who she was on like a live TV broadcast where they had her do fire and they wanted her in the latex cat suit so they put a fire retardant gel all over her so that way she wouldn't catch fire because you know 
latex and fire don't really mix. Do they put it under the latex or on top of the latex? I think on top of the latex. That's interesting because as you know, like latex, you have to be very specific about what you put on it. Like you can only put like silicone yeah. gel on it. You can't put baby oil because it'll dissolve it. So. I mean, they must not care about this latex outfit. So yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so just like learning the fire safety and then also just lots of practice with the prop not on fire. Because you can't, in my opinion, you just, I don't think that you should just jump into doing fire because um, fire is scary. You have to respect the fire also. You can't be too cocky around it or else you'll get burned. But then a lot of people always ask me, don't you get burned when you play a fire? And I think they ask that question because they want to hear like, yes, I get burned all the time. Here's my burn wounds. But I mean, you do something dangerous. So you do run that risk. And like the most that happens to me now is like, a little bit of singed hair Mm -hmm. or like just hot spots. So like just parts of my hands that just will feel really hot with like my tools. But other than that, like I don't experience any, (laughs) anything like that, (laughs) anything dramatic. You were like (laughs) caught on fire and just got like screaming. No, I've seen friends have their hair catch on fire, like really bad. And they just like, be, they'll still be spinning their their prop and they'll be like oh my hair's on fire <laughs> is it like that casual they're just like pat, pat, yeah pat, they just or like going? or someone or like someone will come off like you know into like the the circle area and they'll like you know dump water on their hair but another trick i do if i i'll put my hair up in like little like space buns and i'll like spritz my hair like dampen it with water so i don't um, run the risk of singeing it. Oh, that's smart. Cause yeah. hairspray is kind of. Yeah. I, I, not, not hairspray, but just, I just like kind of like wet it a bit because like I haven't burnt off a lot of hair, but like sometimes you'll like just like a little bit. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Nothing too bad. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you get into the adult industry? Speaking of dangerous practices. Ooh. <laughs> so prior to the adult being in porn. (laughs) I had dabbled in being a cam girl online. I had like done many forms of sex work. I did like bikini topless, like bars. I consider that like a form of sex work. It's kind of like stripping. Mm -hmm. I was topless. Um, I was a dom for a few years and porn was just kind of like the next step. I like to say in my like sexual evolution, it had always been something that I'd wanted to do. And I'd always kind of like admired like, you know, porn stars online, just like, wow, they're doing something like it's very ballsy to do. Like you are butt naked, whole spread for the whole world to see. Like you have to have no inhibitions. And I don't know. I just like, I was lucky to find some people to kind of like give me their insight on it. Um, one of my friends being Alex Lynx. And I, she kind of like, I like to say she kind of mentored me a bit, like gave me like lots of good advice and just like made me realize that it's the art of not giving a fuck. And I feel like, I don't know, with the combination of all the things I had done prior to porn, like, you know, dabbling and camming, doming, and also, you know, doing things like my fire dancing and like raving, like all those like really, I feel like help open me up to the person I am today, like kind of help me be more comfortable in my body. And I don't know, being comfortable being like naked because like you're pretty naked at like raves and festivals, at least I like to be. And that just like taught me to be very comfortable with my body. And I feel like being a porn star, you have to have some body comfort with yourself. Do you find that you had that before you came into porn or did porn help you? Did it make you more comfortable with your body? Uh, I feel like I kind of had it already coming into porn because I remember doing my first like actual like scene, like not a POV, like my first actual scene, just having the crew there and having sex in front of them. I, it just felt really natural. Like I wasn't like, this is weird. No, I just felt like this is this is work. This is how it is. Tell us about your first scene. Who is it with? What company was it for? So some of my first three scenes, first like three or five scenes were with Team Ski. And then I did one with Team Fidel, no, Porn Fidelity. Well, it's been a long time. (laughs) Um, And my first two scenes were POVs. And so those were like, I don't know, those are kind of weird because I just like, 
you know, getting introduced into the porn world, learning like, you know, how to work your camera angles, we're opening up on camera. And then my first non POV scene, I remember was a team skeet scene with Tyler Nixon. And he was such a sweetheart. I was just gonna say, that's a wonderful guy. He's like such a sweet, he's, he's with. honestly like on my list of like favorite male talent, just cause he's very like caring and kind and like really cares about like, you know, your comfort. And I appreciate that. And I don't know. It was just like a fun day. <laughs> yeah, Tyler's great. I adore him. And he has that California surfer boy look. Mm -hmm. What can you not like? <laughs> I know, he does. And so after those scenes, were you kind of like, okay, this is this is for me. I definitely want to do this. I want to like jump right in. And then what were did you come in like with some ultimate goals that you wanted to hit? Like what were your specific goals that you wanted? So getting into the industry, I definitely wanted to be successful and I wanted to, you know, build up my content a lot too, because I'm all about like the multiple streams of income type of deal. Um, but I generally just wanted to make a name for myself in this industry. And I honestly had no idea how it would pan out because I was, I was honestly really nervous getting into porn because of my look, you know, it's so different. And I say that with <laughs> annunciations. It it's, it's unique. Be just because like, I'm like, I'm different, but I don't really see myself as like that different. You know what I mean? Like, like, I don't know how to describe it. Like there's people with like tattoos and I just have colored hair, you feel. And I really didn't know where it would come out. Like I didn't know if I was going to be successful because, you know, the, the whole like trend is like the girl next door look, you know, natural, like ask bodies and whatever. And I like got in my head a lot about it just because I, I was like, whoa, am I like too different to be doing this? Like, I don't know. It just felt a little weird. But then when I started working with companies that like, I don't know, had more creative visions and I just felt like had, you know, kind of steering away from like the step porn, <laughs> the faux cest vibe. I felt like I was kind of like living more true to myself and like myself as a creator. And then I was like, okay, this is definitely like, we're going somewhere. Mm -hmm. But I never, I never like felt like you know, I was going to leave porn, but I definitely did have a couple days, like in the beginning, in the first few months of me being like in the industry where I was like, am I cut out for this? Just like having like a hard day on set, like where you like come home crying because like you got sunburned and like you're dehydrated and your body's just not cooperating with you. And I don't know, you don't get water on set. And <laughs> <laughs> dying. Like you're just dying, you and, I, yeah, and you're. I was sunburnt this like one particular day. I was sunburnt by the time the sex scene happened was happening, like really bad red sunburn. And I remember going home, and I was like crying in the Uber, like, "Am I gonna like be able to handle this? Like, this is such a hard day." And I don't know. I sometimes when I'm having like hard days, I'll like think of like you know performers who are like really big. I'm like, you know, I bet they have their hard days. And like, this is motivation for me to get through my hard day mm -hmm. too, because don't be a bitch. You can do this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's kind of the perfect time for somebody like you, who's unique and has a unique set of skills that aren't just porn related. The fact that you can do all these other things like the dancing and the hula hoop and the fire play, because, you know, now that we have these personal content platforms where, you can showcase like your uniqueness and all of your talents. Um, I think fans really appreciate that and they appreciate like the authentic you and, and that connection. So it may have been harder for you, I don't know, 15 years ago or something like that when only fans didn't exist, when, you know, all of those things didn't exist and you were only booked by production companies who thought you fit a very specific, like, Oh, I can't imagine they were <laughs> trying to hit. Yeah, no, it was definitely, I mean, performers have more freedom and, and more like control over their career now than ever. 
Yeah, I feel like porn is definitely evolving with like, you know, since I've been in the industry and I've had like some people, I've even had my agent tell me to like, you know, you kind of like paved like the way in a sense for like the, some of those changes, like seeing people with more alternative looks, like be like working with mainstream companies. And I have worked with a lot of mainstream companies that have not shot with people with like colored hair, like before they're like, we've never shot anybody with your look. <laughs> Sometimes though, I feel like people like when makeup artists like they get me in their chair they like don't know what to do with me because I have like colored hair they're like oh my god <laughs> yeah they're like how do I do your eyebrows <laughs> I don't have blue like yeah eyebrow pencil. <laughs> I don't know but I'm very thankful though like for this journey and like where I am today like I don't know I some I just have to get out of here like because I'm in here a lot sometimes and I have to like you know give myself credit like for the things I have accomplished. Yeah, no, I, I relate to you so much on that. All right, guys, we're gonna take a quick commercial break and we will be right back. Guys, what's the first thing that women notice when they first look at you? I have a little secret for you. It's not your dick size. It's your skin. Your skin is the largest organ in your body and it's so important that you take care of it. With Tej Hanley, they make it so easy for you to take care of your skin without it being too complicated. There's a wash that you use every day, a scrub that you use twice a week. You have a moisturizer for the AM that includes sunscreen to protect your skin and a special intense moisturizer for the night. That's it. And look, if you forget all of this, Tej Hanley includes instructions so you will always be on track with your skincare. The best thing about Tej Hanley is that you can customize your own box and you can pause or cancel at any time. They ship for free within the United States and very cheap if you're outside of the United States. And because T. Hanley is sponsoring this episode, they're giving my listeners a great deal. Click on the link in my description box and not only will you get T. Hanley for the best possible price, you will also get a free gift with your first box. So click on that link and get started for just $25. All right. So we are back. So Jules, when you first started in the adult industry, you had a personal tragedy that was a bit of a roadblock for you. Um, Can you tell us about that? So when I had just signed my agency contract, like two weeks after that, my dad had passed away. And prior to this, I had been like taking care of him. I became his power of attorney. I was like, you know, I was, I was expecting him to be passing and the, the way that it happened, it just happened really fast. He like had, um, congestive heart failure and he just like a lot of health problems, lost the ability to walk and was kind of like in a, I don't know, I don't know if I'd call it hospice, but like in a care facility with like a small, like private care facility where the family was like taking care of him with other patients. And, like for the, I signed my contract in March of 2019 and that whole month, every like other week, I was getting a call from the hospital saying, you got to get here right now. We think he's going to like die. And so like I, my heart was like being pulled back and forth for like, you know, several weeks, like getting like all these like calls, panicking, stressing out and like, you know, seeing him. And the one thing that was unfortunate is I didn't get to like say any last words to him because he was in a comatose state before he passed Mm -hmm. and yeah, I don't know. Like it's definitely like really sad. And I feel like when I joined porn and had my first shoot, like I felt like I was already kind of mourning before that. And I don't know, I definitely had some high emotions like my first like few months in the industry. Cause I mean, how could you not like, so your father just passed. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Were you guys close? Not really. Like when, when I was like growing up, like when I was little, we were definitely really close. I was a daddy's girl. And then as I got older, like I lived with my mom partially and then I moved back in with my dad, like near the end of like my teenage years. And we kind of like butted heads a lot because he really didn't know how to be a parent just cause he never really had to take care of like us at all. And So we all, I don't know, he was a teacher. So I feel like he kind of like treated us like students in a bit, but I know he loved us, 
But then as I graduated high school and like started living on my own, I wanted to reconnect with my parents because I always thought like, oh, well, you know, they always say you don't like your parents when you're like, I don't know, a teenager, teenager but yeah. then when you're an adult. And so I was like trying to reconnect with my parents and I was actually reconnecting with my dad and it was going well. We would go out to, I would take him out to dinner like once a week and like do all that stuff, call him and I don't know, the way he, like, got sick, though, he, like, was hiding it from me. Yeah. yeah, he, like, didn't tell me that he, like, had this diagnosis. And I remember, like, taking him to one of his appointments. And the nurse is like, yeah, you know, you're congestive heart failure. And I was like, what? And I looked at him like, you did not tell me this. He's like, well, I just, you know, shove it under the rug. Do you think it was because, like, he <clears throat> didn't want to acknowledge his own mortality and limitations? Or was he trying to protect you? I think a little of both. I don't know. My dad, he would like be jokingly morbid. I think it was the Southern in him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he'd always say like, you know, when I'm on my deathbed, if I can't walk, like I want you to pull the plug because yeah. I won't have quality of life. So he would always like be saying stuff like that to my brother and I. And I think it's because like he was older. Like my dad, like compared to my mom's age, like he was like, 30 plus years older than her. Oh, my wow. Mom, yeah. So he was definitely old. He was like 78 when he passed, which that doesn't sound that old, but when you have a lot of health problems, mm -hmm. it definitely is. And I don't know, kind of like, like woke me up a bit in a sense in the way like I live my life. Cause he would always say like, you know, before I die, I want to go do this one more time. And even though he lived like a very like well lived adventurous life, he was like, I want to go back here. I want to own my one last muscle car <laughs> and like yeah. things like that. So I just think that, you know, everything that I do in my life, I'm living it to the fullest extent. Cause I know that's what he would want. And I have to like bring this up because, you know, you know, people online, they want to ask porn stars, are your parents proud of what you do? You know, kind of like in a condescending way. And I always like think like, yes, like I know my dad would be proud of me very much today, even though I'm a porn star, even though we're so undeserving of love. Yeah. <laughs> I say this jokingly, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I know that he would be proud of me for a fact because I'm out here achieving and accomplishing the things that I want and I'm doing it like in the most me way possible. Yeah. Yeah. I relate really hard to that. Um, my dad just turned 80 the day before your birthday, actually. Oh, wow. His birthday September 20th. And he has Parkinson's. Oh. And we actually moved up here to, like, kind of help take care of him. And he's doing okay, but, you know, his health is slowly declining. And, you know, on his birthday, he uh, uh, he fell. Oh, no. He's been falling oh. a lot because the blood pressure with the Parkinson's – Ish. And he's like six three. Oh my god! So when he falls, tall. he falls really far. Wow! And he thinks he cracked a rib this time. Oh, but I'm just ouch. like one Ugh. of these falls is going to be. It's going to like no, every, incapacitate him. Every but. time my dad would call me and tell me that he fell, I would literally just start crying. He's yeah. like, "It's okay," and I'm just like, "You're scaring me." Like yeah. I don't know. And you really realize like how precious life is. Yeah. And. Like, I'm very thankful that I got to be there taking care of him in his last final moments, like, despite, like, you know, our, like, butting heads, like, as I was growing up and stuff. Like, I'm very thankful for that. And, like, oh, I miss him a lot. Like, I actually cried on my birthday because I was like, I miss my dad. I had, like, a Facebook memory where it's like, I'm going out to, like, oh, she's so crap going out to, like, a birthday dinner with my dad. And this was, like, three years ago. And I'm like, yeah. that was the last birthday dinner I got to have with him and he was the type of dad that he'd like be to the waitress and I would like, you know, before porn, I did lots, I still do them like on my like very like fashion shoots just for myself and he'd be showing the waitress. He'd be like, look at her. Like, that's my daughter. She's a model. Like just like embarrassing me. But you know, like I, I He's proud of you. Yeah. No, he was very proud of me. And that's how I know that my dad would be proud of me today. Even though like, I didn't tell him like that what I actually did for a living. Cause like, yeah. I don't know. How do you tell somebody who's like that old, that yeah. I don't know, <laughs> kind of like set in their ways. Yeah. But yeah, like it, it was rough. And like my, br I have a brother, he like really misses him too. And like, I don't know, like we've always been close growing up, but it kind of like brought us closer. He's like, you're all, he's like, you're the, like, you know, one of the only family members I have left. Cause we don't really talk to our mom. Cause she's crazy. Mm -hmm. She's like crazy alcoholic. So I just, that's another story, <laughs> but yeah, like I, I love my dad. 
yeah, that's that's rough. I mean, I I can't even imagine like. I don't know what I'm going to do when it passes. It's going to be really hard. I feel, I feel like a lot of the things that I have like in my life, like the type of person I am come from him. Like my kind of like love for doing all these things, like Jack of all trades type of deal. Like my dad was a band director. He did like silk screen printing. He did acid etching, like on cups. He like did all these like really artistic crafty things. And like, I mean, I don't really make things like physical things yet, but um, I say yet because I want to like do that one day in the future and make like, you know, clothes. But um, I do like other artistic things too. You know, I'm very passionate like about like art in the same way as he is like music, but I like to enjoy music. I also played instruments growing up too, like play the flute, the clarinet, the saxophone, learned some guitar. Cause I just had access to like instruments on instruments right. and like I like, you know, producing visual media art, like, you know, whether it's porn or like my own artsy content stuff. So I feel like, you know, in that way I'm carrying on like his, not that like I want to carry on somebody's legacy, but like in a sense, like I am with like, you know, well, the things I, I mean, like. He's living through you. Exactly. Essentially like you. And, you know, they say that the people are as, are still like alive as long as they're remembered. Exactly. So, you know, if you just treasure the memory of your father. Yeah. The one thing that my dad actually said when my daughter was born was like, you know, this is another way for me to like live on is through like my granddaughter. And I was like, oh my gosh. Okay. Let's talk about dick size. <laughs> I'm like, don't, don't want to cry right Dick size. Dick size. What's your favorite dick size? Do you like large penises? <laughs> Well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> but, you know, since we're on the topic of dick size, well, I do like big dicks, but it's very important how you use a big dick. A lot of people think, I think a lot of men think that, you know, oh, you just have a big dick, it's going to feel good. No. Yeah. I, I appreciate regular size dicks a lot, too. And being in porn, you know, you think that every man, like every male performer out there is like big monster cock. Jules Blue gets fucked by big monster cock. Yeah. Seven times. I don't know. <laughs> um, but no, not, there's a wide variety of dick sizes and it all really comes down to how you use it. Now, I, I do like to consider myself somewhat of a size queen because I like to be filled up. I'll just leave it at that. I don't know how, I don't know how x-rated we're getting in this conversation. You can get as x-rated as you want. But, um, but also I've been fucked by big dicks in porn where it doesn't feel good because they're not using it to its extent. I don't know. I don't, I feel like some people have like, you have to have a body awareness, I believe, like mm -hmm. with something, you know, large equipment like that. So you got to like be aware that yes, it's large and I, I can't just penetrate her uterus. And yeah. <laughs> you know what I wanted to ask you about, but I'm so sad to see that you do not have it today is your lesbian manicure because oh, yes, I do not have it today. I unfortunately. thought, I thought I knew everything in porn. I'd seen and heard everything. And you, <laughs> you were the first person to introduce me to the lesbian manicure. I'm sorry, folks. I don't have it today, but typically these two nails are very short for the ladies, but I haven't had any lady time recently, so. Is that because you, like, didn't have any girl-girl shoots coming up? So you're like. I mean, um, like, like, like even when I don't have girl-girl shoots coming up, I typically do have them short because then when I'm doing my own content, you know. But just, I don't know, this time I, just, I forgot to tell my nail lady and she was, like, almost done. I'm like, oops. If, do you ask her specifically for yes, the lesbian I'm manicure? Like, I don't know. I just say, can you make these two shorts? Like, and does she ask you like, why the fuck do you want those shorts? I don't know. I ha sometimes I'll get like someone who's like young in the salon. I'm like, I have a girlfriend because I, I do have a girlfriend. Yeah. Um, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, I don't know. I just feel like it makes it like more enjoyable because, you know, in a girl, girl scene, if you can't like finger the girl that you're working with, I don't know, then what's the point? Yeah. Like you can only do so much and I'm not going to like stick my like, nails into somebody and I don't know like it's just not me I also like consider myself like kind of a top when it comes to like you know girl girl femme on femme dynamics like I see myself as the more dominant energy so that's why I'm like you know I gotta be respectful to the ladies <laughs> <laughs> what are do you have a preference over being with men or women or like what are the differences 
You know, I don't really have a preference. I definitely feel like I prefer women more because, I mean, they're beautiful, they're soft, they smell good, like, they're soft. I don't know. I feel like when you're, like, having sex with a woman, you know, you can go forever. I could go forever. Like, I've had some nights where we're going for, like, over four hours just because I feel like, you know, when you're – making love to women it's more pleasure based like our goal isn't always like you need to have this giant orgasm well orgasms are amazing but you can have like small multiple orgasms or like just i don't know play around it'd be crazy I don't know. <laughs> what would be your advice to men on like how to please a woman uh, besides the obvious, like communication, asking, I, I see like a lot of like sex advice, like how do I tell my partner this without coming off this way? Or like someone actually, I did this story thing on my Instagram. Someone asked me, I didn't answer it, but somebody asked me like, how do I come tell my partner I'm very kinky without coming off as a creep? And I feel like people just really don't have that comfort, I guess, talking about sex. Cause I mean, I'm so desensitized to sex and like nudity that it's just very normal to me. And so I just, it's kind of like strange for me to hear like, oh, like, I don't know. I feel like communication is definitely key. And, you know, people think that you need to go hard for things to feel good. And that's not necessarily always true. Like, I feel like, you know, the female body has a lot of erogenous zones, like, you know, just like skin touches, like the inner thigh, like the outer labia, the clit, nipples, like all those things, just like, like starting very soft and slow, I feel like is always like a good way to like start in my opinion. Yeah. I think you brought up a really good point about the different erogenous zones because I think a lot of men are just like, okay, vagina and that's it, you know, or like, like the tits and that's it. It couldn't even be an erogenous yeah. zone. Like all like the, you know, like the pheromones and everything that we release during sex while we're kissing, like the pheromones and saliva. Like, I don't know. I feel like when I, like my ideal like sexual time, like starts with like, you know, massage like that's why women like massage because it kind of like it gets us all loosey goosey loosened mm -hmm. up I don't know <laughs> yeah for me it's definitely like the back of the neck and my shoulders like that's 100% my erogenous zone so like if my husband like does a massage first and then like kisses me really lightly there like runs his fingernails like I'll like that will that's that I will like that too crazy. I like I like back pets like just mm -hmm. pet my back like I'm a cat it yeah. makes me purr yeah no, but that feels amazing. Lots of kissing too. I think kissing is important and I don't know, just like also there's definitely wrong ways to eat pussy. I feel like a lot of people, they're like, I love to eat pussy for the, for my pleasure. And I'm like, no, mm -hmm. like, I'm glad you enjoy it, but you shouldn't be eating pussy just for your pleasure. You should be doing it for hers yeah. as well. And I feel, I don't know, I've had some bad, like cunnilingus experiences where what would constitute what are like some bad practices I just I've had moments where I've had like just the guy like in between my legs and he's just like his tongue is just there and he's just drooling on me and I'm kind of like <laughs> I'm kind of like okay like I've had somebody like I've had this happen on set a few times both man and woman and I was kind of like well, every time it happens I just sit there I'm like this is happening where they like take, I'm going to show an example of my finger. They take their lips and they do this to my labia lip. They're like, they're like sucking on it or pulling on it. And yeah, I'm just I, like, when that happens, I don't know. And I, I don't know. It's just, that's not it. And I feel like a lot of people <laughs> learn bad kind of lingus from porn. Like I swear to God and bad sex practices because porn is very much um, a fantasy and it's also like a performance. Yeah. So you'll see a lot of people do stuff that's over the top that like isn't that like might look good on camera, but doesn't actually feel good. Like, like one example that I use all the time is like the girl like slapping her vagina like, or the guy, you know oh, what I mean? The, the whole, like... Yeah, or, like, like you know, like, really... Like, who... I don't how, know. I, who I, does that feel I good like for? I like to do, like, a little tap. Just no, I'm like, talking, like... The slap? Oh, my yeah. gosh. No. Because it's, like, this, like, very aggressive, over-the-top oh, move. Yeah, I could see that. Or, like, being fingered, and they're just, like... Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Like, when guys, like, it really try to make you squirt. Or, like, oh. It does not. I hate that. I hate it when they're like, I'm going to make you squirt. I'm like, I'm like I don't, I, I'm not. this is not fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think definitely like, I don't want to think of like how you could practice your, your cunnilingus techniques while eating some fruit, like cut open a peach. I don't just like savor the juices. I don't know. 
So would you, so for, and I guess it's different for everybody, right? Cause every yeah. girl is different. Like I like it really soft. I don't like it hard at all. If you go hard, it's like my, it's like my vagina kind of becomes numb almost. It's like a defense mechanism. It's like, whoa. And then it's it just like, like shuts itself off. So for sure, it's all about like gentle touch for me. What is it? How about for you? I like gentle touch for sure to start off because I feel like it kind of eases me in. Yeah. And I feel like just, you know, starting right off the back, like too intense. Yeah. I just like, it's like zero to 100. And, you know, sometimes that's fun and all when like you're like really like hot and heavy for it. But I think if you would like really want to focus just like on pleasure, then you need all that warming up. Mm -hmm. Like I think it's really important because like, I don't know, that's how like, the vagina like lubricates itself. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm not like a biologist, but I mean, I know enough about my but body. I feel like you know so, about yeah, vagina lubrication. Yeah, I know, I know a lot about it. Um, you know, you need, that's like what gets you turned on and that's when you like start getting wet and stuff. And I feel like if you don't have that like moment to like, you know, do that stuff, then you're just not going to get that wet, I guess. Yeah. But then like, I know some people, not every, like every vagina is different. Not everyone like lubricates as much and whatever, like automatically. But I just feel like you need to like, you need to like, wine and dine. <laughs> <laughs> wine and dine the vagina. Yes. Wine to take her on a date. Like <laughs> get to know her. Get to know talk her. Talk about her feelings. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. Ask. And also like know that every like pussy looks different. They're not all going to look the same. They're not all going to be like, I don't know, doll vaginas. Mm -hmm. They're all, some are any, some are outies, you know, some like are like fatter than the other. Some are. Like, I mean, I've talked to quite a few <laughs> girls who had who were self conscious about their way the way their vagina looked I've, I've, until they got into porn and then they saw all the different variety of porn of vaginas and then found that like their fans like I mean if, I find that for the most part guys are just excited to see a vagina like they don't really care if it looks one way yeah, or the other but I know a lot of people feel like and I've had like I've met people who have been insecure about their genitals totally. and. I'm like, I see so many, I see like a rainbow of genitals on a, very often, even when I go on Twitter. <laughs> I feel like I need to name the uh, episode that Jules Blue, a rainbow of genitals. Oh my God. <laughs> Great. Sorry. I just had to put that on real quick. So you're a woman who is always working, always mm -hmm. creating which means that you must have some new projects that you're working on. So tell us about yes. what you're up to these days. So besides my YouTube channel, which I kind of put on the back burner, but I'm coming back with new stuff very soon. Um, I am working on a website, which will be my own website to buy my videos from individually or have like a subscription on. Uh, I'm very, very excited about it. It's been honestly my, one of my number one goals being in porn is I want to have my own website, you mm -hmm. know, just something that's like my own, um, especially with like, you know, the only fans scare. I was going like, to say, I, it's very smart to have your own destination. Yeah. yeah. And so that should be coming out. I'm hoping by the beginning of October, just filing out, ironing out the last little bits and it's going to be live. I'm so excited. Uh, my little baby. And I really, my goal of my website was, is to really showcase my erotic artsy porn because that's what I really like to create. I mm -hmm. like to create like really weird, like artsy stuff, but that's like also sexy. Just like, I don't know. I want like my porns to tell a story or have a theme mm -hmm. or just be hot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the last thing that is going to be coming next after my website is live is merch. So I've been wanting to do merch for obviously like everybody I'm pretty sure wants to do merch when they get in, but I've been thinking like, how would I want to do this? So I finally have like a game plan, like designs and some items I'm going to have. I'm going to do t-shirts, some stickers. And for people who like anime, there's these things called Daki Makaras or waifu pillows. They're like body pillows and they have like the cutesy anime girls on them. One side will be like, you know, kind of more covered and the back side will be like, you know, a little more lewd. So I'm going to do a body pillow that will be me in like anime character form for. <laughs> oh God, you know, I shot body pillows for this Chinese company forever ago. And I think it was mostly guys. 
Um, Seth Gamble was one of the guys that I shot. I think it was Ryan Driller too. And I think they put penises on it. Oh my God. I'm not sure. It was so long ago. That's but amazing. I, I just remember being like, and I remember I was so sad that they never sent them to me. I never got one. Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah. But I think they were like these pillows that like, uh, they look so bad. Yeah. They're like, they're basically the whole point of like, they're, they're also called waifu pillows. Cause like waifu is like, um, a term for like your imaginary, like, you know, anime girlfriend that you'll never have. Okay. Which (laughs) you are. Yes. I'm a real, I like to call myself the, your, your real life blue waifu. But yeah. So everybody can cuddle with like, you know, me at home Mm -hmm. when they watch my videos. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! And I like that. Though. I mean, there's so a cute. lot of memes on the internet too that people like hump their pillows, or I don't know, just like, I mean, it gets like pervy. I'm pretty sure, but I don't know. I feel like for the things that I like, it's definitely like I have to have something like this. Yeah, for it's my very fans. Unique. Yeah, <laughs> it's really fun though. So I'm super excited about that, and I'm excited to put more work into my YouTube. I'm gonna right now. I'm like showcasing like a lot of my cosplay stuff and going to be doing like rave vlogs since you know raves are back and like festival things I want to talk about you know some like you know porn stuff there or like just industry things in general and then I also a trend I'm making on my channel is mukbangs like where you sit down and you eat a bunch of food yes so that's a trend I'm making so I have a actually one of those videos coming out soon <laughs> yes I I heard I think um Bridget B was the person who introduced me to mukbangs I was like, what the fuck is that? I'm like, I just like to eat food. So. It's so interesting, like, what people are fascinated with. I will tell you from, like, personal experience that getting the YouTube channel, like, up and going and getting, like, a lot of traffic, it takes a while, oh, but yeah. it's so worth it. Like, it's I'm so glad that I started my YouTube channel. Um, and all you need is that one, like, viral video. You and need to go viral once. Because my YouTube was, like, kind of flat, and then I had one video, and now it's just, like... So it's, it takes a lot of work. I mean, my goal with it, like right now it's just for fun and like, I'm, you know, I'm producing high quality content and, you know, if something happens with it, like, you know, hell yeah, I'm excited. But either way, like it is something that I've always wanted to do just to kind of like, I don't know, showcase like me in a different way. Cause I feel like Instagram, it's, you know, our digital like business card for the world. And I feel like right now video things are becoming really more popular and on the forefront of like, you know, social media that we consume, what with like TikTok coming Mm -hmm. out and like, you know, YouTubers and streamers. So I feel like it's another realm that I want to like dive into and just like, I don't know, build up something from there. What's also really great about YouTube, what I love about YouTube versus like Instagram and the other social media platforms is they do like the opposite of shadow banning. So on YouTube, they, you know, most people find me because they're recommended my videos. They don't know who I am. I mean, if if you like look at the comments, most of the time it's like, who the fuck is this person and how did it end up in my recommendations? But it's great because it's like, you know, the more people watch it, the more they rec. So, so your discovery on YouTube is, um, really great in the way that their algorithms work, the way that they push your content to other people, as opposed to like Instagram where you get shadow banned and like people can't find you unless like like they specifically look, (laughs) especially if, unless they look for you. And a lot of times they can't look for you because like you're fucking shadow banned. So they can't find your handle. So YouTube is the opposite. And that's why I love it so much. You just have to be like super careful about porn stuff. Oh yeah. No, Um, but they, they let you get away with like, quite a bit as long as you're, you know, I mean, I've had a couple of like slap on the wrist. Well, you don't want to like, I know you don't want to cuss, no drinking and smoking, things like that. I know like are against guidelines and you can, which, which I, no, you can totally cuss. I thought that it would demonetize your videos. If you're saying the F bomb every like three words, if it's so there's very, I can show you afterwards. Actually, I'm sure our audience doesn't really want to hear about this, but there's a very like, like if there's a cuss word in the title or I a see. lot of cuss words at the very beginning of the video, I then they see. might demonetize you. But if you cuss here and there throughout the like, video, they don't care. Okay. Because I have a lot of fully monetized videos that totally have. That's I amazing. mean, I swear all the time. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, that's not so much. But it's also like if you're talking about anything sex related, like because we talked about dicks, like this video will not get full monetization. But that's okay. That doesn't mean that a lot of people won't watch it. Yeah, I know? see. So. I get you. It yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, tell us about some of your favorite shoots that you've done this year. Ooh, so I have a little list. Oh, you have a list? What's on the top of that list, (laughs) So the top and most recent one, because it's also September, which is even more special, is my Twisties Treat of the Month shoot. (gasps) Who shot that? I think somebody named Holly Randall. Oh, my God. Was it me? It (laughs) was was me. I shot that. (laughs) No, honestly, and I'm not, like, I seriously am not just saying that because you're here, but that is definitely one of my favorite, most noteworthy, like noteworthy shoots of this year just because I feel like the way the whole shoot was stylized I feel like it really embodied my essence Mm -hmm. like as a person like I mean it was very me (laughs) like like all the styling the outfits like the backdrop I don't know it was just so fun and I don't I just also is something that I really coveted like from the moment I got in the industry like seeing the twisty stuff like I want to do that I want to be that I want to do a pretty shoot and have beautiful sex with a beautiful woman and have it filmed and I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Twisties puts a lot of uh, money and effort into their shoots. I loved it. So. I, I loved also the scene. That, so the first day we did the scene where I'm the pop star and that was with Jenna Fox. It was called her biggest fan. That was honestly really cute. Yeah. And it gave me like Katy Perry vibes, even though I don't really see myself as a Katy Perry, but just the pop star like esque, like I'm in my dressing room. And then the next day we shot at that really cool studio, Cinepack. And I remember walking in and I was like, Deja vu. Because I had done like a, one of my cosplay like projects there. And I was like, no way, we're doing like we're doing yeah. an adult shoot here. And that was the first time they had allowed an yeah. adult shoot. And honestly, yeah. it was the coolest thing ever. And like, oh, I'm so in love with like all of the photos that we got, like all the different looks that we got. It was just ugh, chef's kiss. Amazing. Yeah. It was I'm, pretty cool. I'm very like, very thankful for that. And also it was for my birthday month too, which also felt like extra special. It was like a nice present to awesome. me and the world. <laughs> I'm so glad that you liked it. Um, any others that you want to mention? that we won't care about because it wasn't Christie's. <laughs> so two of my other favorites, I did a browser scene where they let me fire dance in it. Oh yeah, Leah shot that, right? Yes, yeah. I love her so much. She's amazing. And I just really like strong women being, you know, the directors mm-hmm. and like the producers because you don't really, I mean, they're they're out there, but they're they're out there more now than they've ever yes, been. Yes, but I really appreciate. It. I like strong, creative women. Like I really, it's there was a time when I was like the only female like producer working because I've been doing this for twenty three years, and now there's so many. There Hell should yeah. actually be less, <laughs> so that I can be special again because I'm no longer special. <laughs> and then I have one more that I want to bring up or actually two more I'll make it quick so did a browser's last this one hasn't come out yet but it will come out with Alexis Fox I love her I love her so much much she's such a fun person to be around and I I don't know I just really enjoy good energy on set and like people who are just fun to be around like I know it's going to be an amazing day we have an amazing crew just fun concept and I really appreciate that type of stuff being in this industry because while it's work you know my goal like being on set is to show up, make a great scene and like having like, you know, amazing people to be around makes the day just like feel so much lighter. And mm-hmm. like, I don't know, just like, it's really why I love being on set. It's like, I really love it, being on yeah. set for those reasons. And last one, this one just came out is VR cosplay scene. That was actually a cosplay from one of my favorite animes, the company VR cosplay X. I told them like, Hey, I want, like, I'll provide the costume. Like, let me do this, like, in VR. Because I know people would love it. And it was super cool. Do you see VR being, like, the future of porn? Um, I think yes, when VR headsets become more accessible to people. I don't really know how much they are. But I know that, like, the technology, some of them are kind of, like, janky, Mm -hmm. I guess. I'm not really, I honestly have like no idea, but I know not everybody has a VR headset. So I feel like, you know, when they're a little more accessible to people, probably like when they're like less than like, are they $500? I don't know. I don't know. I don't have one. I'm like, I don't know how much they are, but I I imagine they're kind of pricey, you know? So I, I can see them definitely being more accessible. And I feel like, you know, porn is definitely transforming with these things. I, and I want to like talk about 
the JOI city thing. The Joy City. Yeah, the Joy City. Because of that, because I feel like if you don't, I, I'm like taking over the podcast now. Oops. It's okay. It's so, your show. <laughs> I'm like, Holly has her amazing, you say Joy? Yeah, we call it Joy. Joy, but, Joy yeah. City, where it's an interactive, like, like internet scape with like porn stars. I, I don't know, maybe think of the game cyberpunk a bit. That's pretty much, we've modeled a lot of it after that. So essentially what it is, it's what's called a metaverse and it's essentially like a world, an online world that plays kind of like a game where you can walk around in a city and you can access different spaces and we're going to make it like an adult themed city. So different performers will have their own spaces that they will like design and they will be able to sell their content um, in those spaces, like their regular videos and photos, just like they do like on OnlyFans, but in this new kind of dynamic space. But what we're also going to have is like this ability to do like these kind of live events, which is what we wanted to talk to you about, which is why we have to set up a meeting. Uh, I'm so excited. Because we really want this to be this kind of virtual ability to connect with fans. And then we have those 3D hologram capabilities which we captured you in recently you guys should check it out it is it's pretty it is fucking so dope. cool yeah. it is literally me me immortalized online yeah as a character i thought honestly it was so cool like seeing like the final product of it and i really like i like i love this project of yours so much and like i'm excited that i got to be part of it and I don't know, like, I definitely see that as, like, becoming more of the future of porn, like, having, yeah. this, like, more in-depth interaction where things, like, you know, it takes you to, like, an alternate reality, kind of yeah. like, you know, how I imagine, like, the VR universe is, like, we, we, you know, like, the movies where you put the glasses on, you're, like, in this other world, like, that I kind of imagine things like that. Yeah. And this is kind of, like, this makes me think of that, like, yeah. you're in this interactive, like, escape you can like lose yourself in this like city and yeah. this metaverse and it's it's gonna be i mean you know there's like so much to work on we're, right <laughs> now we're working on like a payment processing system um but the great thing about it too and why i was really attracted to it because i talked to people about vr before but like that's kind of, i don't do any vr i don't do any gaming so that's kind of like beyond my scope and so it just seemed too much for me but when i started talking to the people at joy who i knew from before what I really like about it is it's not just VR. I mean, you know, what you and I saw, what I showed you, and the only way I've actually seen the space is walking in, like, in your browser, like 2D, like any, on any computer. Mm -hmm. So it will be VR capable where you can definitely walk around oh, it so as VR so you can have that so experience. <laughs> but if you don't have VR, you don't have to. And you can walk around it and play it. So it's, it's basically, like, kind of like an online video game but we're gonna have like yeah. commerce in there you're gonna be able to like buy products like nfts Ugh, like that's so cool. it's like mind-blowing like it, the shit that it we're gonna really be able to do. It, it mind blows me a lot and it makes it's kind of reminiscent to me of like you know early like chat rooms that had like mm -hmm. the similar vibe where you walk in like you go here kind of like runescape a bit but like some of those like old online chat room games but like sexy and it's porn and yeah it's, and it's very like cyber which i love like cyber-esque like futuristic things yeah. a lot <laughs> and it's an open world so you create your own avatar and you walk in and you can meet other people who are in the world as well i can go on a quest and you, <laughs> seriously you can we're gonna like anyways i don't want to like turn this into a whole okay, like sorry. promoting no but I, I do but i don't <laughs> so but um yeah it's uh it's pretty fucking awesome so it's a uh, joi.city if you guys want to go like check it out it's still very much in like alpha mode we're still but you can like go and kind of look around and get an idea of what it's about it's pretty awesome and we definitely want to like incorporate jewels into the project <laughs> i think you're so perfect for it so jewels it's been so lovely to have you here thank you so much um before we go mm -hmm. i actually have a couple of questions for my patreon members so i want to make sure that we ask these mm -hmm. just because you know, they're helping support the show with their uh, generous subscription to my Patreon, where, by the way, you can watch this live if you're not a Patreon member and doing so at this exact moment. <laughs> um, okay, so Danny uh, said the blue part of her name comes from calling herself the Blue Mermaid. How long has Jules had a fascination with mermaids? Oh, wow. My fascination with mermaids stems from me being very young. I 
I've always liked mermaids, you know, the little mermaid, the movie. That was one of my favorite movies. And I remember that movie still holds up by the way. It really does. You watched it recently. Yeah. It's still really good. (laughs) I also had this like really weird dream when I was younger that I still remember to this day where I think I like felt like in real life, I fell asleep on the way home from the beach and I was with my like great grandmother at the time. And I fell asleep in the car and I remember like having this dream that we were at a gas station by the beach and there was like this mermaid stuck in this like tank and she was asking me to save her. Do you think that was like your inner mermaid? I don't know. I think so. It was really strange because it felt like it was like a very realistic dream and she was just like in this like stand up tank at the gas station with like bars around her. I was probably like five or six years old having this dream also. And I remember like waking up and I'm like, what was that? And I like remember I used to like Google like when I was younger, are mermaids real? Mermaid sightings, mermaid skeleton. I don't know, just all this weird stuff. So I don't know. I just have like a fascination with like fantastical creatures in general. (laughs) That makes sense because you're a fantastical creature. (laughs) Okay, last question is from Vit Anya Naked. Um, you kind of answered already half of this question. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, they ask, what style of clothing does she prefer in everyday life? And what are her interests besides her career? We kind of talked about the interests already. But clothing. But clothing. Oh, that's a good question. Because I mean, it, blue, it, obviously. I mean, blue or black, but also like what I wear in like regular day life, like has a very wide variety. Like today is very like cutesy, casual. I'm going to little dress but other days when I'm like just out running errands or not doing anything where I don't have to be like camera ready I call it potato mode where I'm just like (laughs) in my like workout like cargo like capris or like I don't know yoga pants and just like basic stuff I'm really dressing down trying not to stand out if I have to go anywhere yeah (laughs) because believe it or not I actually do not get spotted in public that often or people are just not um, or, aren't or brave enough to come up to you. That or like, I don't know. But although when I was at Disneyland earlier this week, I did hear somebody say like, is that Jules Blue? Like like a few feet behind me. And I'm like, I'm not ready to say hello to people. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm okay if you say hi to me as long as you're respectful. And just not when I'm like eating at a restaurant. That would be weird. Yeah. That's always <laughs> weird when people put you when you're eating. Well, again, thank you so much thank for coming on. Thank you for on. having me. I had so much fun. Good. Always a pleasure. Um, can you tell everybody where they can find you online? So you all can find me on Twitter and Instagram. My username is Jules underscore blue. And that's G, J, whoa, not G, sorry. Don't know how to spell my own name. J-E-W-E-L-Z underscore B-L-U. And you could search me Jules Blue for OnlyFans. Just Google my name and my official things will come up. You'll find it. Don't fall for the fakes and scammers. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting when you, because of the shadow banning, if you p- look for people within whatever app it is, like Instagram or Twitter, you'll get the fake accounts. But if you use Google, this is what I always do when I try to like verify people's accounts. If you put in Jules Blue Instagram, because Google only looks at traffic, you and, will actually yeah. get the correct You'll account. find my official one. Yeah. Has the one with the most followers, not the one with five followers messaging you to fly to Dubai or something. Yeah. 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 (laughs) And you guys can follow me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. And of course, if you want to watch shows like this live as they happen and support my podcast, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall unfiltered. I'm also back on TikTok. Wasn't my idea, but (laughs) I was told by the kids. It's a good place to be. Yeah, that I got to be there. So I'm on TikTok and uh, we're just posting fun clips from this podcast interview. So follow me there. It's uh, Holly Randall Unfiltered on TikTok. Thank you guys so much for joining us. (laughs) See you next week.